Greetings, all. It's Max, and we are back. And today we're going to kick the James 2 cult out there. You know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. Pretty much anybody who deifies Mr. Ruckman. Okay. James 2 is works. Therefore, we've got to go back to the Old Testament and to the Jews with it. James 2 is works for salvation. Those people don't know their Bible. And I have to wonder if they're even Christian. If we weren't in such troublous, perilous times with what's going on in the world, I'd have to think ponder more on that I'm not saying they're not saved I'm saying is it Christian to believe you can be saved by works in any distant dispensation I would say no but I don't have time to go through a big breakdown of why that would be the case so instead we're just going to look at James here we go we'll just start reading the whole thing the first part is about being a respecter of persons and of course the Ruckman crowd knows all about that they are, if you want to know about being a respecter of persons, just look at those guys. Okay? My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto you assembly of men in a lumberjack outfit, uh, and there come also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit here thou in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand stand thou there or sit here under my footstool and ye are not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts hearken my beloved brethren hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith heirs of the kingdom which we have promised to him that love him well wait a second here um, it says God has had not chosen the poor of his world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom has not God chosen uh, the poor that are rich in faith doesn't say anything about works in James 2 there but 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 faith without works is dead the justification what about all that stuff well, we have verse 5. We have verse 5. God's chosen those rich in faith. As though that might mean, you know, that God can only accept faith as part of your salvation. Continuing on, verse 6. Be ye have despised the poor, do not rich men oppress you, and draw before you before the judgment seats. Do not they blaspheme that worthy name which by which ye are all called? If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, and ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as con, con, as transgressors. Convinced of the law. Convinced instead of convicted. Okay. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. And the law is, of course, works. So even in James 2, we have a thing that says, God only cares about your faith, and nobody can keep the law. Even in James 2. I don't have to go to Hebrews, and I don't have to prove Abraham was a, a, a guy who was justified by his faith. I don't have to go all those places. We can just stay right in James. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now if I commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. Sorry, I lost my place as I scrolled. Um, so speak ye, and, and so do, as that they shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he, hath, for he shall have judgment without mercy, and hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth, rejoiceth against judgment. For what doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say that he hath faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? Question mark. Okay. So we have two verses that are saying God only cares about your faith in reference to salvation. 
So what is James talking about here? What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he had faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Hmm, I wonder what he's talking about there. Now we're going to go forward to the example. I've done this study a couple of times now. We're going to go on to the example in verse 15. If a brother or sister be naked <clears throat> and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. These are a big contention. Uh, oh, faith, faith, if you don't have works, you're saved, you have to be saved. Where does it mention salvation in there? Where is salvation mentioned? Anywhere in there. It is exactly talking about you're supposed to be fruitful. If you have faith, you're going to be saved. But then if you, if you walk away, you fall away, you lose your faith for a long time, you're not fruitful. Do you understand? I mean, I don't, I don't see how anybody could mess this up. Because what we know about God is that you cannot be saved by works. Which is why these cult people have to take James and, and stuff her back there in the Old Testament, where it doesn't belong. And say, oh no, this is a Jew thing. It's ridiculous. Your faith is dead if you don't show it. Your faith is dead if you're not using it. If you're not actively using your faith. If you're given spiritual gifts to go out and teach or preach or uh, prophesy or whatever it may be, if you don't share those gifts with people, your faith is dead. It's not working. It's not, it's not producing fruit. It has nothing to do with salvation at all. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? We are talking exactly about a physical salvation because he goes on to say, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food. Okay? These are saved people that are really poor and on rough times. Is their, faith, is their faith physically putting food in their body or saving them or doing anything? They're going to heaven, but they're hungry. And he walks up to another Christian and they say to him, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, because you have the faith of Jesus. And then you don't clothe them or you don't feed them. Your faith is dead. Charity. Charity is godliness. Is it your charity that saves you? We'll look at that in a second, too. Because if you want to make this idea that somehow works are getting you into heaven, we can say that you have to do charity, otherwise you're not going to heaven. And that's in New Testament in Corinthians. So what is it? Are we right in that it's faith alone in every dispensation? Or are the cultists right? Okay? You're welcome to attack me and write little comments. Nobody is blocked but one person. I unblocked everybody from my channel. One person that isn't Denlinger or anybody else. It isn't Gene Kim. And come on and tell me where I'm wrong. Even so, verse 17, even so faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. It's not producing fruit. It's simple, people. Yea, a man safe, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me my faith without my works, and I will show you my faith by my works. It's just an expression. Oh, you have faith, and you look at them, and they're carnal, or they haven't done anything for the Lord. And I go, well, I have faith, and look at all the stuff that I do. You know, I'm actually doing something with my faith. Whether it doesn't mean you have to go out and uh, go start street preaching or do really much of anything. Be charitable. Be a good Christian. Maintain high morality. And share it with people.
Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. This is the one where the devils know God is real, and they're actively working against him. doesn't make the devil saved. But wilt thou now, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Here we go. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? These uh, cultists say that that is, see, Abraham got saved or his salvation was warranted because he put his son on the altar. That's what these kooky people tell you. It says in the Bible that Abraham's faith was counted to him for righteousness before any of that happened. Okay? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac, Isaac his son upon the altar? Question mark. The problem lies in justified. Does this justification equate to salvation? No. And what kind of a moron thinks it does? Abraham, our father, was justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar. He showed his faith. Would Abraham have put his son on the altar if he did not have faith in God? No. So what is it that saved Abraham? When it says in the Bible... His, his faith was counted to him for righteousness, not justification, righteousness. Seest how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Exactly. Your faith is made perfect through your works. Anybody can say they're a Christian. Anyone can say they believe in Jesus. They might, they might not. You don't really know. But if someone says they believe in Jesus and they go out there and they're being charitable and they're preaching sound doctrine and they're doing things or even just behaving like a Christian you would figure would behave right that is showing your faith does that save you no no again you got this problem with lot the Bible says was saved. Was his works make his faith perfect? No. And the scripture was fulfilled with say, uh, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. What's that? See, these James 2 cultists really love that works part. Oh, faith without works is dead. We're going to forget the other. This is the third verse that proves that it's faith alone for salvation. We're going to look at justify here in a second as far as for that, what that word means. Okay. But these, these, I don't know what to, what to really call it. They're obviously heretics. And I think that some of them know that I am right and just refuse to admit it because they're too puffed up. Nobody else teaches this garbage except people who are cults that everyone in the Christian body knows are cults. Okay? That salvation is by works. And that James is a, is a works-based system or, or something like to that effect. There isn't any. Mainline Christianity does not teach this. It's just one cult out there who says, I'm a real Bible believer. Re, and he and he rees like a stuck pig when you poke him when you poke him in his nonsense. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham 
believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. No, Abraham, Abraham, Abraham put put Isaac on on the thing, and he was going to sacrifice him, and that's how he went to heaven. Really? And he was called a friend of God. Abraham's faith was made perfect by him continuing on in the faith and doing very difficult things through faith. Salvation is simple. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. But then, resting on the faith. Resting on the faith and using the faith to embolden and empower you and strengthen you to do things that normally you wouldn't do for fear. That is faith made perfect. Likewise, also not Rahab the harlot, justified by works, when she had received the messengers and had sent them away, uh, out the other way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. When you have faith, you're supposed to be doing something with it and really relying on it. Was Rahab the harlot, was her salvation based around her letting the Jews go out the back way? No. She was saved by faith in the Jewish God because she believed in the Jewish God. And she was going to help the Jews as a manifestation of her faith. And if you don't see that reading James 2, you're a moron. And I shouldn't say that to just general people listening, okay? I'm saying that to you people out there teaching nonsense that James 2 preaches salvation by works. I'm going to take a brief look here at justify. To prove or to show to be just or conformable to the law, right, justice, propriety, or duty. Okay? When you have faith, you have a duty to share the faith. You have a duty to do the right thing. You have a duty to be charitable. And if you're going out there to be charitable because you think, I need to do this thing to get into heaven, or I have to do this because I'm a Christian, then you're really not being charitable. just regular orderly do suitable exactly proportioned and proper just and justify okay nothing about salvation it says in theology to pardon and clear from guilt to absolve or acquit from guilt and merited punishment except to and to accept as righteous on accounts of merits, merits of the Savior or by application of Christ's atonement to the offender. I disagree with the application of Christ's atonement. I disagree with that. In theology, to pardon and clear a uh, form of guilt. Does that mean that you're saved? Pardons your sin? It says clear from guilt. justify you cannot equate justify with salvation unless the scripture specifically dictates that specifically dictates that where you have James 2 if you take faith without works as dead and twist it around every way you want to and just ignore the three other verses that talk about um, your salvation and justification through faith you just ignore those and go faith without works as dead you're being dishonest has many applications and justify. Almost never is it actually talking about salvation. A person can be justified in a lot of things. We can't equate that. And if your works are not manifest, your faith is not manifest in this world that we live now, how are you saving people? 
how are you sharing your ideology? How are you making your neighborhoods a better place? Now I'm going to point out to where if you want to take this idiotic mindset that works will somehow save you, we'll look at charity and uh, where that comes up. Now I thought this is interesting in Bible Gateway they changed their uh, their layout and when I first search charity I searched the NIV and I'm not a dumb dumb right I know where charity is in the Bible and it only comes up with 1 Corinthians 13 and there is no highlighted charity they well, they won't even use charity in the NIV won't even use it so we go to the real Bible or the actual Bible as as Ed would say the actual Bible and 1 Corinthians 13, or 1 Corinthians, pretty much the whole thing has charity laced in all throughout. And we're going to talk about this works uh, manifest of your faith. Otherwise, you are saying that Paul, in Corinthians, is, saying, is teaching work salvation. If you use the same parameters as you use, these cultists want to use with James 2. Though I speak, this is uh, 1 Corinthians 13, though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. It's vain. Uh, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and, all, and through all I have faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Been given great spiritual gifts and I'm not using them for good. Given great gifts, not using them, not giving them to people not sharing your gifts with the world. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Your motivations have to be in order. So if you gave all your goods to feed the poor and you gave your body to be burned, is that saving you? No. Profiteth you nothing. We'll look at just where the verses here that it uses charity. 1 Corinthians 8, 1. Now it's touching things offered unto idols. We, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. Doesn't say it's going to save you, though. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, understand all mysteries, um, I could remove mountains, have not charity, I am nothing. See? He's showing that if, you, if, your, if your faith does not manifest fruit, it doesn't really mean anything. Oh, I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned. Charity profit me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Charity never faileth, but where there is to be prophecies, they shall fail. Where there are to be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Isn't that interesting? I think we live in those times. Prophecies, they're failing? Oh, yeah. Tongues, they shall cease. Well, the charismatic church is still going. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Yes, into the ether of the internet. And now faith abideth, and now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. See, Paul is a work salvationist. If you want to take the James 2 approach that the cultists take, it says right here, charity is more important than your faith. That's a whole study in itself. It's a whole study. Salvation by charity. I should start a new cult. Hmm? Max Bauerite just doesn't have a ring to it. 
Doesn't have a ring to it. So obviously when you read these things, you have to look at deeper meaning and you have to hold fast the truths of the character of God and the truths throughout the entire Bible. Your works are as filthy rags. The Old Testament, the blood of bulls and goats. Don't cleanse your sin. Salvation by faith alone. Obvious. We'll read a couple more. We'll finish this off. And then, uh, yeah. You all can poke me with a stick. And say, but Max, what about this? And what about this? And what about this? Go for it. Go for it. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather ye that may prophesy, let all your things be done with charity. And above all these things, put charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Well, if it's perfect to be charitable, that must mean salvation by charity. If you give all of your possessions to me, your grand poobah, I will guarantee your place in heaven based on Colossians 3.14. Huh? What do you think about that? You think that's, you think that's right? That's what they tell me about James 2. That's the connotation that they're using in, in James chapter 2. But now when Timothy came, came unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity... And that you have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us, as we also to see you. We are bound to thank God al always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of all, all of you toward each other aboundeth. Notwithstanding, she shall be sa sh saved in childbearing, if they continue in the faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Well, that's obviously works, right? If they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Well, Timothy's, uh, they're in there talking works. Paul's talking works to Timothy now. If you want to take that, that, that cult member James 2, cult, cult James 2 uh, Ruckmanite teaching, if you want to apply that to the rest of the Bible, boy, well, you're making a mess, man. You're making a mess. Timothy 4.12, let no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Well, faith wasn't first. It must be charity. It was a salvation by charity. Second Timothy 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace. Call them all the Lord for your heart. Timothy 3.10, 2 Timothy 3.10, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner, life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. Titus 2.2, 2, The aged men gave sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, and charity, and patience. Above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude. Uh-oh! We got Peter talking about salvation by works! Oh, it's a charity cult! I'm going to be the charity cult. Now I got Peter. I got three witnesses. Is that what you guys think? Huh? We're going to take the way we're, we're going to apply James and say salvation by works. And we're going to take that mentality of how you're twisting the scriptures and pull them out and put them into, put them into, what do we got now? We're putting them into Timothy. We're putting them into Peter. We're putting them into Titus. Uh, or basically all of Paul is preaching. His entire preaching was salvation by works through, through charity. Ah, I greet you one another with the kiss of charity. Peace be with you all, are in Jesus Christ, amen. And godliness, brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness, charity. John 1, 6, uh, which I borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom thou, if you bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, and thou shalt do well. These are, uh, John, uh, Jude 1, 12, these are spots in your feasts of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water carried about the wind's trees, whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. It's a manifestation of your faith. Faith without works is dead. This is why faith is not a work. 
The Bible says it's not a work. That's a whole different discussion, but faith is not a work. Revelation 2.19, I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the, la uh, and the last to be more than the first. And then Revelation. Probably want to read the next one for that to get, the, get a good context of it. But uh, yeah, charity. In a general sense, love, benevolence, goodwill. All right, so this is a requirement for salvation if you want to take James 2. And faith without works is dead. If you want to take that and make that, you can't be saved without charity. If we want to go there, it's silly. It's silly. I hope that clears up James too for anybody out there in what faith without works is dead means. When you look at it, understanding that God does not accept works of any kind for any sort of salvation of your eternal soul. God accepts works for physical salvation. God accepts works for blessings. Yes. As we're walking around here in our in our in our meat suits, right? Yes. Yeah. Doing good works. You're going to be blessed. Obviously. But when I'm dead, then what? Can't do any work. It's your faith. All right. That's what I got. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Peace be with you.